Today, Sal and I are so excited to make a couronne bordelaise, which is a French bread. We're gonna put the water in here, but reserve just a little bit for when we add the salt. And then in here, we had some leftover dough, pasta di riporto, that we're gonna place in here and break up before we add the flour. Just allow it to dissolve a bit so it's gonna be easier to incorporate with the flour. Now, this is totally not necessary. You could do it without it. And I guess you would end up with a bit less dough at the end, but this just adds a lot of depth of flavor. All right, to this, now we're gonna add some yeast. And here is the yeast and this as well. We'll try to disperse and allow to hydrate before we add the flour. And now the flour. And here we just use some bread flour. You could also add some whole wheat flour to it. We're gonna bring the dough together and probably you noticed we have not added the salt yet. That will come in just a bit. As you can see, it's nicely incorporated now, although it still looks really rough. And right now we're gonna cover it up and allow it to rest for about 15 minutes before we mix it again. 15 minutes are up and the dough still looks really shaggy, but look how interesting. Now that the flour has been able to absorb the water, and the gluten is starting to form. You can see already a lot of elasticity in here and it's already coming together. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna allow it to rest another 10, 15 minutes and then we'll add the salt. Remember that little bit of water we had left over? All right, we're gonna put it right on top and sprinkle the salt over it. And now we're gonna use the pinching method, just like so. You see, as I pinch, the salt gets pushed into the center. Now, I'm going to place it again into somewhat of a ball cover it up and let it rest again. And here we go. Put the dough on the table and work it a bit on the table. The nice thing about doing these stretch and folds is that you um, work the dough less and allow the gluten to relax. this together so you could you could just work the dough like we're doing now but like I said it allows the, the dough to rest now we're gonna take the dough place it in here and allow it to rise uh, for about half an hour 45 minutes then place it in the refrigerator overnight so this is the next morning. We just took our dough out of the refrigerator. As you can see, it has well proofed. Now we're gonna put just a bit of flour on our work surface and allow the dough to get on the table. Then we're gonna divide it and we're gonna shape it. Let's place our scale right here. We're gonna turn it on. So it can zero out and then we're gonna just divide it like so. And this is gonna make two couronnes. There we go. Let's begin by measuring out small little portions. There we go. Here we have two larger ones. This is the dough that was left over, which we can either make a pizza out of or save it for the next bake when we make another couronne. 
and we can use that for the pasta di riporto. And here we have our small little portions that now we're going to have to shape and set aside to rise. And we're gonna do that with each one of them. And the way you can do it is by tucking under like this, so all the dough comes together, and then just give it a little bit more strength by doing this. We're gonna dust this peel. We're gonna place our small little balls into the shape they are going to be. So here are the two large ones. I'm gonna place one here and the other one right here. And then we'll begin by actually already giving them the shape they will finally be at the end. Let's see. Three, six, seven. Yeah. Notice how the two large ones are in the center. Another quick dusting. And now we're going to cover them up and allow them to rise. Our dough balls have been able to rise and now we're going to dust our proofing basket really well. We'll do the same with the other right here. Let's set these two aside since they're ready and we are going to prepare the center part with the largest dough ball. Let's get just a little bit of flour and we're gonna roll this out nice and thin. With the rolling pin, we're gonna make a really nice circle, nice and thin. And if you see that the dough resists, just let it rest a minute and come back to it. I think this is perfect. Let's bring our basket over here, lay it right on top, and now we're gonna spread it out as evenly as possible. There. Now we're gonna get some oil and um, a brush, and we're going to just go around the edges, just like so. And this is where the dough, when it will bake, will be able to rise. And it will make it just transform the bread into a crown. Now for our dough balls, we're gonna give them a little bit more strength again, actually lots more strength by reshaping them. And we're going to put them on here upside down just like so. We're gonna do this with all of them. And this is our last one. And we're gonna place it right in here. Now there is one more step. With this knife, we're gonna go down here. Just make sure that you don't cut into the cloth. Here. And we're going to cut these little wedges. Let's see. Just like so. With wet fingers, I'm going to just barely wet the top of each dough ball and then simply Grab these corners and place them right across each ball. I'm gonna dust it with flour one more time and then take the corners and cover it up and allow it to rise one more time. And we'll do the same with the other ones. Today we're gonna use the Fontana Gusto where the burning chamber is below see that nice fire going and the cooking chamber is above and here comes the best part you can see how 
our dough has been able to proof. And now we're going to flip it around on here. Let's see if we can do this without causing it to deflate. There, I'm gonna take this out. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other one. There we go, you just kind of have to do a quick transition here and not be afraid. There, both of them are on our tray and we can put it in the oven. Almost forgot, we need to dust it. And now it's ready to go in. Now what's very important is to put some steam into the burning chamber. So we have these uh, pans that have been preheating, and now we're gonna bring the bread out. It's time to put our bread in, close the door, and allow the oven to do its magic. It is finally time to take our two beauties out. Look how gorgeous they are. And here are two beautiful Gouron Bordelais. We can't wait to serve them with some honey and butter or preserves. And all that is left to do is to wish you un buon appetito and hope that even you will bake them very soon. Happy baking.